Welcome to Ask the Doctor on African Broadcasting Network. I'm Ilo Ogonimo. Today on Ask the Doctor, we'll be looking at HIV, Human Immunodeficiency Virus. According to reports, about 36.9 million people are living with HIV and it has resulted to the death of 1.2 million people. Between the discovering and now, HIV has claimed the life of 39 million people worldwide. HIV AIDS is not a death sentence when you know your status on time and if properly managed. Today on Ask the Doctor, I guess today is another person than Dr. Emmanuel Abusa. He is a medical director and CEO of Zanua Clinic and Maternity. Dr. Emmanuel, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And it's nice having you today. And you too. Okay, if you listen to my introduction about the lives HIV AIDS has claimed worldwide and is not a death sentence, Please, could you throw more light on HIV AIDS? Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. And first and foremost, I would like to thank you for giving me this uh, privilege to okay. talk uh, in this uh, program. Welcome, it's actually sir. a challenging uh, topic anyway. Okay. And uh, it is of global concern because of the impact it has had on our society. Okay. okay? Uh, HIV is actually a uh, human immunodeficiency and virus. Okay. It's quite different from defining AIDS, oh, okay. you understand, which means acquired immunodeficiency <coughs> syndrome. Okay. okay. Now, HIV was first uh, actually discovered. first discovered in Nigeria in 1986. What? You know, that was the first time a case scenario was seen in a 13-year-old uh, girl. Okay, and this led to. Uh, inauguration of several committees, but most notably the committee that was inaugurated as at that time was the National Expert Advisory Committee that came up. So when the National Advisory Committee came up, which is in charge to advise the government on how to tackle any epidemics or anything, okay, when it came up, they advised the government of certain things to do. And at about 1997, between 1996 and 1997, around that time, they come up with the National uh, AIDS and uh, STD control program. Okay. National AIDS and STD. STD. By STD, I mean sexually so transmitted, transmitted disease, disease control program. So this was the one that was not taking care of that exercise in different forms, you know, through publicity, through uh, outreaches and all that. Until there about at 2000, where the government you know, as it were. I think it, as at 1999-2000, with the coming in of uh, Obasanjo, Olusegun Obasanjo, our then president then. So he now came out with uh, another committee. This time it's National okay. Action Committee okay. on AIDS, and that is the popular NACA. NACA. You understand? So NACA came around that 1999 during Obasanjo regime, and uh, they, they were into much of the control, control you know of uh, yeah of hiv and aids in fact the the main thing that they actually focused there was the prevention the prevention and treatment oh, okay. that yeah. was exactly where their their focus was lying oh, about okay. NACA. yeah oh, NACA. Okay. Okay. now needless to mention at this stage i mentioned that uh, you said there is a global challenge you understand that with a high prevalence in some part of the world, you know, uh, in uh, Africa, the Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, is the area densely more concentrated. South Africa, Botswana, and all that. Okay, then globally in the whole world, looking at the whole world, was to have the, the Eastern Europe and the Central Asia. You understand? Those are places with high concentration. Now, falling back to our own uh, country, Nigeria. Nigeria, one might be wondering, you know, where. Are we free? Which side is more densely populated with HIV infection? But and the last, that, you oh. know, but the last studies done in 2011 actually showed that the largest concentration of HIV was around between uh, uh, the the central north. Okay. The central <laughs> okay, north. So yeah, state. the central north. <laughs> then we uh, state and some other states around the okay. central north. But thereafter, you look at the south south, Cross River, Portacourt. Data as at that time was ranging the seventh, oh, you know, okay. at that stage. But that so was then. That was actually in 2011. Oh, okay. Okay. Also about that time, you know, the what studies showed from the UNICEF statistic, they were able to discover that uh, 
about 7,000 people were being infected on a daily basis. By but that's that worldwide. Yeah, that's worldwide. Okay, on a daily basis, you know, 7,000. And all of these 7,000 people, uh, nine, uh, 900 were people less than 15 years, and 6,000 were people above uh, 15 years. And it must impress you at this point in time that 75% of those people who are infected on that daily basis, the whole bulk of load of that time, 47% is on uh, 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 women. Women. Wow. women. Wonderfully, do you understand? So one can be afraid looking at Don't women. Don't even go there. Even looking at you, I'm scared. <laughs> Don't even go there. Okay, now we've learned about the history of HIV AIDS in Nigeria. So what are the differences between HIV and AIDS? Okay. What are the differences between the okay. two? Okay, like I rightly mentioned, I told you HIV by definition is a human immunodeficiency virus. Okay. okay. Now AIDS, I told you, is acquired immunodeficiency. Syndrome, okay, syndrome. syndrome. Okay, now um, the AIDS actually means a situation wherein your own immunity is totally uh, deficient, and that's the meaning of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. As in that's that it is acquired, oh, okay. not natural. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, there are other natural uh, situations that can result in uh, low immunity becoming a state where you have deficiency of immunity. Then you have the artificial which is acquired mm -hmm. so hiv is one of those causative organism that causes that acquired immunodeficiency okay. and, and okay. syndrome okay. so why hiv is the virus it causes acquired Quiet immunodeficiency syndrome, syndrome. okay so what are the mode of transmission of hiv yes. well, now the mode of transmission of hiv there are several modes of transmission okay uh, but uh, in the tail end, in conclusive aspect, uh, uh, the main mode of transmission appears to do with uh, contact with uh, blood and bloody f uh, body fluids that have uh, these uh, uh, organisms, you know, in them. You understand that, you know. But uh, generally speaking, you know, uh, statistics have only shown that uh, sexual route appears to be the, the highest, the highest. Uh, uh, okay. rate you know, of uh, transmission, highest mode of uh, transmission, sexual route, you know. Then receiving blood products, you know, including blood transfusion, uh, needle pricks, and all that, okay. There are also other means of acquiring uh, uh, the infection. So it's, it's, it's true. Then you also have true placenta route, like we mentioned, uh, we we'll get to see, okay, yeah, mother, yeah, mother and to child, child uh, and transmission uh, route. You know. So why sexual route appears to be one of the most uh, marked, there are other common routes, you know, like that. You know. Not just uh, homosexuals, heterosexuals only and all that. But they are, saying, stick. Well, they are stick carriers. Yeah, they are. Okay. So HIV has so many ways of getting it. Sexual route being the most uh, yeah, dramatic. Blood transmission is beginning to, you know, play a significant role, you know, in the course of uh, acquiring uh, HIV and uh, infection. Understand. Health workers are also at risk, you okay, know, from needle, fun. accidental needle pricks and all that, you know, like that. Uh, yeah. Significant blood transmission, like I mentioned, you know, because in this part of Africa, reckless driving, bad roads and all that, prone us to accidents and all that. A majority of the time, because of the accidents and wound and all that, these individuals needed to be transfused on an emergency basis. You understand? So during transfusion of those products, if they are not properly well screened and all that, you know, individuals can acquire that, you know, through that. So these are some of the significant ways through which HIV can be acquired. Okay, okay what are the symptoms? Now, the symptoms of HIV, okay, well, uh, you may need to uh, uh, understand the, the natural history of HIV to be able to discuss the symptom of HIV, okay? Now, uh, what happens is that when an individual has contact the virus, okay, now it takes quite a couple of time, close to about three, between three months and then six months, you know, before you may have the first uh, symptom, okay? Okay, we yeah. need yeah. to yeah. yeah, the first uh, symptom, you understand that, okay? Now, thereafter, the first symptom usually mimic normal uh, fever feelings in our common environment you know flu-like symptoms cold headache 
body pains and all that, you know. So it's not really specific at that time. And that time is what we call the seroconversion uh, stage. That is when the individual can at first, at that particular period, test positive to that. You know, so before being before that uh, time, between that time when the virus is acquired to that time when the individual begins to display a little of these symptoms which are non specific, which I told you is the seroconversion, is the window in the window and uh, phase. And so meaning that as part of the symptoms, people can actually be in the window phase without being having any uh, symptom. Same. So the first word, the first answer I would give is that sometimes there are no symptoms, you know in between uh, the time of acquiring the infection and then uh, getting seroconverted. It's only after that time where there is seroconversion. And mind you, during the seroconversion, the body will start bringing out its own immunity to challenge the virus. So the individual can, again, after that seroconversion phase, you know, fail to have symptoms, live heavily until a point in time comes where the whole immune system is totally down and opportunistic infections have started coming and then the individual will start having symptoms which are specific to those areas that are affected. Remind you, it's a multi-systemic disease. It affects the eye, it affects the skin, it affects the heart, it affects the kidney, it affects the chest and all area? that. So, it, yeah, it affects the intestinal tract, you know, leading to chronic uh, diarrhea and all that. You know, so at the point when the disease is not checked on time, you know, those terminal symptoms which suggest very low level of immunity will begin to show. You know, it may be diarrhea, it may be cough in relation to TB, it may be skin disease, carposis sarcoma, it could be a um, uh, uh, vaginal discharge, it could be oral um, uh, trush, candidiasis and the likes. It could even be that which has migrated to the brain, what we call cerebral tosoplasmosis and some other infections and all that, you know. So generally at the point in the window phase, no infection. You understand that? Then that there it have to do with the blood. It has to do with the blood. The blood, yes, of course. It has to do with the blood because the organism has the predilection to specific cells of the body, you okay. understand, which is the central core of the immune system. And those cells, we'll talk about it, the CD4 uh, cells, yeah. you know, not just all the blood uh, and cells, the target for the immune uh, system and a few other cells, you know, in the body. So what I'm saying here is that you can be symptom free for quite some time, you understand, before these uh, systemic uh, symptoms will call into play, you understand. So for systemic symptoms, diarrhea for the intestinal tract, TB, cough, chest pain, you understand, respiratory system, you may have skin disease ranging from uh, your normal uh, fungi infection of the skin to even tumors of the skin. Even tumors of other parts of the body may flare up. You know. Tumors are more susceptible in uh, HIV infection than uh, the other uh, comparative population without uh, HIV infection. The person might start having oral thrush and all that. So at this point in time, then the person will be losing weight markedly. You understand the so-called uh, HIV wasting syndrome. You can start losing weight dramatically which is uh, so bad you know, as it is. So the symptoms are multi-dimensional, multi-systemic. It's not just limited to one cardinal symptom as it be. Yeah, okay, before we talk more on this, one of you have just joined us program is Ask the Doctor and we've been looking at HIV. Our guest today is Dr. Emmanuel Abuza. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, we're going straight into our health tips segment. After this, we'll be back.
keep watching Indian sports. It's a clash of the titans. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a living God. Be in the same yesterday. Be in well, wherever you are watching, this is Mama Haley Nation. All the way from Wally This time. Welcome to Sunrise Eagles Devotional. Velvet Room. Now, you can hear from the mouth of the icons themselves. Are you a kid or a teenager? If yes, looking for something captivating? Hello there. You're welcome once again to another episode of Health and Fitness. You sit down with entrepreneurs and they encourage you on how to develop your own entrepreneurship business. Keep watching. Let's talk this time. Enjoy that health tips. Well, doctor, you said something. You said, well, before we went on this break, you, you, you made mention, you said during the window period that someone does not know if he or she is HIV positive. And I believe the test result, as in for the first three months, the test does not show. So, what's your take? When someone do a test today, the person is uh, negative. So, when next? Should the person go for same test? Okay. Like I told you, during the window period, you know, what actually happens is this. When there's an infection in the body, you know, the body will build up an immune response, you know, to that uh, infection by producing some certain uh, uh, molecules, you know, including antibodies and all that, okay? Which many of these tests can pick up, you understand, okay? so. Exposure to an infection, antibody is triggered. The antibody will get to a, a tighter level to which it can trigger a positive test when you test them, somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if um, when the HIV infection came in, you know, the body is not mounting a response, you know. So before the antibody test can actually come up and give you a positive test, it takes about the three, between three and six months. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why if any individual goes for a test, you know, for an HIV test, and um, the individual tested uh, negative, you know, considering the fact that six months range is still in, 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 in point, okay. we will ask the individual to come back and three months time. Okay, three months uh, yeah, time. Three months time, you know, to do the HIV test. Okay. Those are for individuals who's who we don't uh, have uh, problems with their partners if they have a partner to say. Otherwise, for individuals whose partners are positive, already known that their partners are positive and their spouse, you know, is negative, we will tell the spouse to continue doing it every three, three months, mm -hmm. you know. Is it possible? Yeah. Because at the point we never can tell, she or he may become infected. So well, it's positive that the spouse, one of the spouse is positive and the other is negative, negative. what we call serial discordance. Okay, it's, do they have the such case in Nigeria? So many cases. We handle so many cases like that. And it's a beautiful one. And they've given birth uh, to many children. They have even retired from uh, uh, childbearing now. There are so many. They are all around us. Positive uh, father, negative mother, positive mother, negative uh, father, father. Yeah, so to say. Okay. So, what are the cure for, for HIV. HIV? Well, the truth at the moment, there is no um, specific. cure, specific uh, cure, you know, for HIV. Okay. Um, the reason is that, to be very frank with you, the HIV virus is as tricky as the most tricky person in the world. Okay, because of its morphological conformation and how it induces uh, its infection in the host. So this poses a lot of difficulty, you know, in getting to the cure of HIV. Eh? 
uh, uh, disease as it were you know so for the moment there is no cure you know but at point there are drugs okay. which can reduce the replication of the virus reduce the replication of the virus okay. you know so that it is maintained at a very low platform low level in the body and the individual will have to live longer you know as it were okay. but this also depends on the state at which you are catching this individual depend okay. on the immune state so that's why it's good to go for testing exactly all time. yeah and early detection matters a lot. yeah matters a lot and that's the key cardinal feature in time to prevent uh, hiv and all that in awareness you create an awareness program you know you do voluntary uh, counseling and testing which ought to be free in every setting you understand okay. so that individuals can be encouraged you know to so come so early detection you know amounts well. to, yeah it amounts okay. to the success of treatment okay. you know can you throw more light on Anti-retroviral drugs. Anti-retroviral. Anti drugs. Anti-retroviral drugs. Uh, anti drugs. Okay. Yeah, anti drugs, like the name implies, these are drugs that are used in the course of treatment of HIV uh, patient. Okay. Now there are various classes. Okay. And each of those classes, they have their targets. You know, in that uh, virus. You know, as it were. Different classes ranging from those that prevent the virus from even attaching to the immune cells. You know, those that uh, prevent the virus from replicating, you know, and those that uh, during the course of replication, mind you, you know, some enzymes are also involved. Those drugs that are directed towards those enzymes and protein, preventing, you know, the virus from seeing those proteins and all that so that it can reply. Uh, yeah, so and those of them that prevent them from, you know, the virus from coming out from the newly infected cells. So we have different classes of drugs, you know, in the management of HIV. And it helps when it is detected on time. Yeah, the the drugs actually help when it is uh, detected uh, on, on time. time. You know, okay. you know. To be very frank with you, HIV is not a dead sentence, and uh, HIV as it is, you know. Um, it's not a killing problem. Okay, it's so not what kills the individual. <laughs> it is when is the it immune thinking? system, yeah, <laughs> it's when the immune system is now down and you now have other organisms, we we'll call okay. them opportunistic okay. organisms and all that That's coming. So those are the ones okay. that will kill the, the individual the at the end okay. of the day. Okay, before we go into management, because that's when management comes in, before yeah. we talk about management of HIV AIDS, so let's talk about the prevention. Because let's talk about the prevention before we go into the management. Okay. Now, uh, the prevention of HIV, you know, um, is a multi approach, you know, in the prevention of HIV. Yeah, before you talk about the prevention of HIV, you remember we described the various routes of uh, uh, transmission of the organism, and we mentioned sexual activities and all that, okay, as a major factor. Of course. If any person, if that is the most major mode of uh, getting it, if you stay abstinence, beautiful one, right? No, you won't abstain from your husband I'm married. anyway. You're married. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm not talking to you in person <laughs> anyway. You know, but abstinence, you know, forms uh, a major part for particularly the teenager. And girls that are just coming out. Eh? Not only girls, yeah. boys, yeah, teenagers. The teenager, girls, uh, no, no, really, the boys actually. Uh, abstinence. We do a lot of abstinence on the boys' side, but the young girls coming don't uh, don't young ladies. The young ladies don't abstain because of uh, they want to get up. Don't I you look biased. at your bling bling. You look at your bling bling. I'm not biased. Look at your bling bling. The young you're girls biased, want to wear bling bling. They want to wear bra Brazilian weavum. They want to come up and wear those. Uh, good but they things. can't give to them. So, so they are all there. Why the young boys were just waiting and probably seeing them no, as they go. Like, so but abstinence. Is the best yeah, if you can, you know, to avoid the sexual uh, uh, route. Mm -hmm. But where in, you know, in individuals where the, the, there's no uh, strong relationship, no intimacy from boyfriend to casual sex and all that, protective methods like by, uh, condom use, you know, is still going to help. And in, the, in fact, you have to modify your risky behavior, oh, okay. limit your risky behavior okay. by that alcohol and all those other things which will prone you to yes. booking yeah okay well, obvious i hope you're learning a lot from this topic on hiv before we continue going on a short break 
where we'll bring you a nutritional value segment on sweet corn. Wow, watch this. Corn is an incredible variety of maize that has a delicious taste and savoured by one and all. Let us take a look at the amazing benefits of the sweet corn. This incredible vegetable plays a vital role in improving digestion and in turn relaxes the intestines and helps in getting rid of digestive problems like constipation. Corn is rich in folate which helps in keeping the heart healthy and prevents various heart disorders or cardiovascular diseases. Sweet corn has a huge amount of vitamin C that can go a long way in controlling the cholesterol levels in the body. Are you feeling low? Well then munch on some delicious corn. The folic acid that is present in this tantalizing vegetable helps in preventing any kind of anemia. The starch extracted from corn improves the metabolism of glucose in overweight women. Your eyes are the door to the universe. Yellow corn is known to be filled with beta carotene which stimulates the production of vitamin A which in turn is essential for good vision. Presence of a nutrient called thiamine in corn is important for improved brain functioning. Thus, eating corn can help in strengthening memory power. Younger looking skin is everyone's dream. Corn is rich in antioxidants which play a vital role in getting the body rid of free radicals and in turn leaving the skin looking youthful. The dreadful disease cancer can be prevented by consuming the lovely sweet corn. The phytonutrients present in corn shields your body against colon and many digestive cancers. Presence of folic acid in sweet corn helps in protecting the baby and makes the mother feeling strong. I hope you enjoyed that uh, nutrition value segment on sweet corn and I hope you learnt a lot about it. Quick one, what's your advice to people watching you right now? What do you want to tell them? What's your advice to the public? My advice to the general people who are watching me is not to be scared of this uh, uh, viral infection. It's actually to see how they, they'll be able to prevent the infection and those who are um, infected, they should live positively with the uh, virus. See their doctors, comply to treatments and all that. Please avoid risky behaviors, casual sex, abuse of social medias and all that will help you stay longer in life. Thank you. Well, viewers, I hope you enjoyed today's program and ask Dr. We come your way. Same time, same station next week. Doctor, thank you very much for being there for us. For the married ones, fidelity is also important. <laughs> <laughs> well, ask Dr. We come your way. Same time, same station. I'm in the Ogonimo.